Hey everybody, Southern Bubba here. I got y'all another video today. Something a really completely different. Uh, it's a little strange. <laughs> well, not really strange, but just the creativity of the specific gentleman that this video is about. I had got into a group on the Meetup app. Don't know if anybody knows what that is, but uh, it's about drones. And I've met up with these people quite a few times and met some really interesting people, met, saw some really cool uh, drone setups. Some of them were in the $25,000 range. There was one that was in the back of a bed of a pickup truck. And let me just, I'll use my truck as an example. See how big the bed is on my truck minus this box. This one specific drone took up the whole bed. That specific drone was about $40,000, and the week before I saw it fly. Well, there was another gentleman that showed up for this particular event. Um, he had a trailer. It was a trailer that was set up for UAVs. It was really neat. He had, I mean, he, it was like a mobile command station. And I don't wanna go too much into it before y'all see the video but it's awesome what he's doing he was a carpenter by trade and wanted to do something totally different so that's what he did it's october 19th but i took this footage about four months ago and i do apologize to you john i told you i'd get it out sooner and just things happen and i just haven't got around to it so here we are i've got it i'm i'm doing the video for you now so i hope this helps you and i love what you're doing with it i think it's awesome so guys i hope y'all like this video like i said it's something totally different and just leave some comments below and just tell me what you think of this trailer so here is here's the video with john i hope y'all like it i'm here with john martin he's got this cool trailer that you can do mobile state uh, mobile say uh, mobile station for uavs and he's going to give us a quick tour of what he does so i hope y'all enjoy this so here we go all right, John, what we got here, man? Well, what we got here is a station where we're able to fly the UAVs out of. Um, typically, you don't have to fly from in here. You can fly from in here. Most of the time, we're flying from an exterior interface. Uh, but I'll show you what happens in here. We'll come on down to this one. We have a radio here ready to go. Um, these radios are connected. They're modified and connected to the trailer to a booster, which is here. The HDMI is connected to the trailer and distributed it through the toolbox here which is a matrix which allows us to take the hdmi feed from up to three helicopters in this station at one time and distribute them to the trailer or other places also live streams we have one live stream here a live stream here and a live stream here so um this this radio is modified it's an inspire a uh, modified radio so this is the 5.8 if most people don't understand they, the, they communicate with two radios this is the camera operated radio so the pilot would fly from here, the camera operator would fly from here. This communicates between the two radios, this communicates to the aircraft itself. We kick on those boosters, we run our HDMI in and we're good to go. How much how much further will this go with these hooked up to the external? Um, than, we've we've than ranged the factory? six miles. We've, ranged we've, six we've miles. Gone, we've gone a little farther than six miles. Okay, so basically it roughly factories about two and a half normally on the inspire. I mean maybe a little bit more on six the inspire. Your, your normal range on an Inspire is maybe a mile. Oh, maybe a you, you mile. You might okay. over water, you might get a mile and a half. I wouldn't push it any farther than that. It's typically not your radio control, your RC signal. It's your HDMI signal. The light bridge is only going to allow, it's weaker than your RC signal. So that's the first one that drops off. And we're, we're not really boosting these. The boost on these are, it's, it's a benefit, a bonus getting the range. What we are boosting for is the video signal. The video okay. signal typically on our aircraft will start kicking off after 3,000 feet, which is about a little over half a mile. Right. You'll start seeing it degrade. After that, it really drops off a cliff. So when you say range on your helicopter, are you talking video range or RC range? Because if you can't see, it's really no good. Right, if you can't see it, so, it's no good. So uh, really, I, I was just curious how far that, just for the actual range of the copter itself. A mile and a extend. half, if you're out over the water, you get, you, you're going to get some decent range, you know, clear line of sight no noise around but typically a mile mile and a half is the most you're going to get okay we're, we're doing anywhere from five to six miles wow 
on this with the boosters up. Nice. That's with that's with the HDMI not kicking out, and that's what we do it for for that that signal back. So we get a really good signal back, and then we're able to distribute it. So this unit right here is our cellular system. This is what you'll find in most police cars right now. It's all Wi-Fi ready. You can go ahead and connect to it. This runs off of three different SIM cards, AT&T, Verizon, and I'm not sure who the other one is. Uh, it'll pick up the strongest signal and give us Wi-Fi in here. So we're able to connect the internet. Um, we can either hire wire in to our ethernet ports or we can just connect with our, with our password. We're also, we're redundant on that. We have another one as well. We're redundant in here on everything. We have two of everything. So this is a cradle point right here. What this runs off of is the MiFi unit's not there. I'm sure you've all seen the little MiFi units. They're a little singular cellular unit that just gives you Wi-Fi. So that connects and connects to here. If this unit some reason wasn't functioning. So that's a MiFi unit. That's a Verizon MiFi. That would connect, this is an antenna. That would connect to the antenna. USB to that and it's another source of internet. So if this one wasn't functioning, this is our backup. So this is a cradle point which will also give you Wi-Fi and distribute all the, the signals throughout all our ports. Okay. Nice. So, and I see you have a... So our desktop, this is a high-end desktop. This is for processing 3D mapping. This is, um, this is really powerful. So we're able to, um, if anybody does any mapping or anything or stitching any kind of pictures together, the 3D mapping, 3D stitching, even just, you know, pictures, portraits. It's about processing time. You can go up and fly to mission 15, 20 minutes. But if the mission wasn't flown right, if the overlaps weren't done right, if there's a wind or something happened up there, you typically get back home or back to the office and you start running the processing and you find out, oh, that mission, we should fly this again because the overlap's real good. Right. We can drop this in, we can come down, put it right in here, do our processing right on the spot. If we need to go back out and fly again that mission, we can head You're back out. You're already there. We're already there. We yeah. don't have to go back out the next day. Weather didn't get bad. Winds didn't kick up. 15 minutes, we're back up there getting it done. So basically, and anybody who does mapping knows it's two, three times in a lot of cases to get that, that thing right. So being able to process, at least start your process knowing that everything is good and you can go home and spend three hours processing it and you don't have to fly to mission again, that's what that is for. Gotcha. So that, and then we have communication from a radio. Um, this has uh, GPS, gives you GPS coordinates, has all the emergency services on it. Also, we have handheld radios. Uh, so we have a couple handheld radios that communicate with that for anybody out in the field. Right. Um, that and one other line of communication. That's So outside of this is what we don't show right now is there's a camera that connects to an iPad. So we have an iPad that sits here. Typically, we'll sit in the middle of the two pilots here and there's a camera outside. And the camera actually tracks, so typically the pilot will be outside and the cameraman will be in here. So he's flying FAA by FAA law, by rules, he's flying out there, got eyes on the aircraft, the two cameramen are in here. They have eyes on the pilot and also communication on an open channel through the iPad and a camera outside. It actually tracks the pilot. He can move around up to 10 feet and it'll follow him around and he can communicate with the two cameramen in here and they can open channel communicate back to him by just okay. talking. Of course, he can't see the people in the trailer, but the people in the trailer can see him. Right. And it's a nice line of communication, especially when you're sitting here, you feel a little blocked, like you don't know what's going on. Having that view of the pilot who you're working with and seeing what he's doing gives you a much better perspective of what's going on and, and you're actually more comfortable. Okay. So it's nice, yep. Nice. And you said that this is a, a, this is a six by 12 trailer. This is this a particular six one. foot six by 12 foot by six foot. Right. Yep. Okay. So um, and what really makes me, this makes this a mobile station is our power sources. So I'm gonna show you something down here, which we're really proud of. So typically, so you're gonna find, this is our breaker box. So it's a 12 volt system, it's a charging system, just like your house, everything's running on breakers right now. So. Um, this runs on this panel right here. So this is an inverter. So all I have to do to get power in this station, I, I walk in this station, I don't have to plug anything in, I don't have to break out a generator. I hit this button right here. I'm up to four to six hours running off a battery bank that's built in down here. Okay, so that's one source of power. My second source would be plugging in to shore power. So the shore power, let's say um, I'm plugged into shore power. Somebody kicked, off the, kicked out the cord. This system, with the batteries up and running, you won't know. Nothing will go down. It'll be seamless. It'll transfer the power 
to the batteries without you even knowing about it. So say you were running your generator. So we have three sources of power, shore, generator, and battery. So let's say you were out running your generator, you were running a generator, generator ran out of gas, and you were in here and you're flying. You don't even know that generator ran out of gas. It's seamless. The power just continues, kicks into the batteries. You got four to six hours before even those get low, and they'll warn you before that happens at any point anyways. So that's what really makes this a mobile station. We right. never need to break out a generator. We never need to plug into shore power for four to six hours. Yeah. And typically, you don't need to be out more than that. But you, you have it here just in case. That's right. We yeah. use that. The, the, there's usually yeah, two Honda, suitcases. Honda 2000. That's, right. a, that's a really good generator. Very well, quiet. We usually have two of them. One another one sits alongside of it. And, that, and we parallel those two together to run the AC. Yeah. Because you can't run the AC off of one of those. But normally, only time we run that generator is to really charge those batteries or run this, mm -hmm. and you don't need both of them. So why have a big 4,000 generator that eats up all your gas, this big right. thing, when we can have two little suitcases, when I need to run that AC, and we run a cord to the two of them, we run them both. Otherwise, I'm, I'm basically redundant. Now I got a backup generator too. Right. So we're basically in here, we're completely redundant. There is two of everything, two yeah. of everything. We have USB, we have pop-up power supplies, USB power all throughout the trailer. There is power outlets throughout the whole trailer with USB with three volt power throughout the whole thing underneath everywhere. In the cabinet up here we have power. Yeah, I saw so, you had the, some uh, DJI yep, chargers so there. The, yeah, well, this is our charging station. This is what we use this cabinet for as our charging station. So we've also put in a. Um, realistically, you're going to find that in a lot of stereo cabinets. Um, anything that's generating heat and it's just drawing the heat out of here. So these batteries all up and running, all this stuff up and running in here is creating heat that's closed up. So we have a thermostat set at 99 degrees. Degrees in here and this fan kicks on. It's got a duct that comes down from the floor down here and sucks in the cool air and cools nice. it down. So our batteries and everything don't overheat up there. Nice. Um, like I said a minute ago, uh, before that uh, gentleman had come up, uh, you said this was a six by twelve. But I, I heard you say to somebody earlier that you weren't making this anymore. You're you were doing you're doing anymore. bigger ones yes, now. Yes, sir. We, we've the trailer company that we're working with now has put a line out just specifically for us. They've we we've, we stress our concerns with them what we need for a trailer, and they said, well, how about something a little bigger, a little tall, a little wider. So they came up with the 14 by 7 by 7 for us, and they're manufacturing that, so that's what our new ones are. There's no more. This is a, this one we're actually putting up for sale next week, um, and we've started one of the 14s in the shop now. We've also, we're producing 20-footers, so it's going to be 14s and 20s, not no more than the 12s. The 14 is not that much bigger. It's not that much more weight. You can still carry it with a 150, tow it with a 150 easily, but it gives you that extra couple feet in length which is not really the important part but believe me that one foot this way and that extra six inches above oh, yeah. your head really makes a difference on what we can do for you in here as in giving you more and then just the elbow room too absolutely i've, I've got a five by ten enclosed trailer myself yep. but i've also got a seven by sixteen you feel like you're walking and in, it's, it's like, yeah it's, it's a huge amount yes, of space yes. a lot. so down here we store um this is our monitors for the outside. Oh, okay. Um, the 50 inch actually stores up on this wall right here, didn't which even, we don't have. Didn't even see them when yep. I walked in. Yep, those are stored down there. Now those go out and get put on the outside. I see the antenna for the radio yes, laying sir, there, that just actually magnetic. actually goes out the door and hooks on right out there. You really come out and get better for us. The live streams and everything are getting better, getting a little more cheaper. They're starting to make the connection so when we're able to power it up a little bit better. Um, so a lot of that stuff's coming through for us. The antenna systems are coming through for us. So we're able to start integrating it. But everything in here, like all these plates, we have to manufacture these. We have to get the aluminum plates. We paint them. We have them cut. We have them all machined. We have to label them. You know, nothing in here is you can't buy anything from the store. Nothing. Not yet. And see, <laughs> and, and here's what the thing is: is behind like these panels right here, everything in here is accessible. There's not yeah. there's not an electrical component in here that's not accessible. Yeah, just all, all your wiring and I stuff runs back every here. Wire, every wire in here. Yeah. This this the 12 volt light system that plugs the outside running lights for this thing. I I can get to. There's not a wire in this trailer I cannot access. Everything is completely accessible with. with turns my thumb take yeah. these four out disconnect the tv and this panel comes off i get everything i've got access to everything and there's a lot behind here oh i'm sure there is and there's a lot behind every one of these so that gives me access to change out hdmi cables my ethernet cable went bad we have testers we just plug into all these ports and it tells us what's bad so i pull this panel off 
maybe the USB cable is bad. I switch out the USB cable, I can get to everything. If you can't get to anything, you're screwed. Yeah. So we've we built this one of our one of the things we take a lot of pride in is the fact that we can come in and take this trailer and it could be three years from now and all these components can be outdated and I could come in here and pull everything out of here, every piece of wire out of here and have it back together for you in a couple of days and you wouldn't notice anything and it'd be right. all completely updated. Yeah. So we've designed them to be to move along Repairable. with the tech well and that yeah. move along with the technology as fast yeah, as it's too. moving. I mean you're gonna spend thirty, forty thousand dollars on a trailer that you know in six months a year there's better equipment out. Mm -hmm. I want to change that equipment. Well, if it's built into that trailer and you can't get to it, well, it is what it is. It's a fixed. It's a fixed yeah, item. Yeah. What, what good is so that? We, we, we do not do that. Everything here can be replaced, rewired, and tucked back in, and not even noticed. It's called being smart business. Yeah, it's, you have to. Because you ha your customers will come back. Yep. Yeah. Well, we did. We learned it from the first one. We, yeah. we tried to make it a little bit like that, but we didn't go to 100 percent. And we found out, no, nope, we got, you got to go to 100 percent. You need to access everything you put in here. And this is the name of the company, UAV yes, Mobile Station. Yes, sir. Love the logo with the Thank you. with the earth there. Thank you. Uh, but John, I am not going to waste any more of your time, sir. You Thank you very much. Very I appreciate welcome. you talking with me and, your, and what, my fans. Did you give me a card? No, I will give you one then. Good. Now, then uh, you got satellite hookup. So we hook up. We have a satellite on a tripod. Mm -hmm. it hooks up to here. Uh, yeah. If you can't get the Wi-Fi, the system off the cellular system, we hook up to. The satellite dish. Yeah. That's cool that you can put a you can put some extra screens out here with oh, yeah. the yep. with we all also, this stuff. You can run as many as you want. We also have a couple of tripods where we run two fifties. We don't put the fifty on there, so we put a fifty here, a fifty here, and we have these two here when we're doing shows. So like, there's no real limitation to how many monitors I can run off of this. It's just you know it gets a little ridiculous. Right. But on shows, we'll put a fifty there. We'll put a fifty there. We'll have those there, and everybody gets to see everything. That trailer was really neat, wasn't it? He's got all kinds of little gadgets and stuff in there. I mean, how do you like that if if you don't have a cell phone signal on, say, Verizon, he had AT&T and he also had a uh, Wi-Fi hub or wh whatever he called it. it. It's amazing the stuff that he thought up in this and supposedly his newest trailer, at the time he had one in production but had it was not there, he said that one was gonna it's going to be the Cadillac compared to the one that you just saw on the video. I would love to be able to go and see his newest trailer and see what it looks like just to see if it holds up to that Cadillac uh, status. But, I mean, it's amazing what you can do with these drones now. I mean, you can do all kinds of things. And I, I don't remember, I think in the video that I, he did say that he had been doing some of these trailers for police departments, uh, sheriff's departments, uh, I believe some cities, and I believe the one he was fixing to send out at the time was like for uh, a police department somewhere in, it was either Ohio or Illinois. And I mean, it, it's just, a, it is an absolute cool invention. It just shows you how creative some people can be. I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the drones that were at the event, some of these really expensive ones, and just some flying around. So I hope y'all enjoy them and just kind of see some of the wild creations because a lot of these bigger ones are homemade and some of them are, you can still, you can buy them as a, a not really a kit, but you can buy them already built.
So folks, thank you again for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing them. I, I enjoy doing this stuff for you. And if you can, please, please share my videos. I'd love to be able to continue doing this. As usual, if this is your first time watching my video, hey, hit, hit that uh, subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell and turn on notifications so you'll be alerted when I post up new videos. Well, everybody, I hope that everybody's doing well and everything's going the way that you want them to, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video out and you guys take it easy and I will see y'all on the next one. Talk to you later.